So welcome to the third and last talk for today. We are welcoming Jonathan Lassalle. Uh, Jonathan is in charge of MBSC-related activities at Artal Magellium. His daily job mainly consists of supporting engineering engineers, introducing and propagating MBSC in their own companies. Jonathan is also in charge of third part software customizations and is notably the architect of the Artal Cyprus framework. And um, today, in his talk, Jonathan will present an operational retext from the CNES, the French based agency. I'm personally eager to hear more about this uh, experience. So, welcome, Jonathan. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. Thank you for being here and for listening to me uh, worldwide. So, it's really nice, really nice event. So, I'm happy to be here. and. Uh, I will present you also the results of uh, some projects we made with the CNES, the French uh, Space Agency. Um, during those projects, we studied the, the fact to, to add some um, MBSC, uh, uh, MBSC activities and MBSC uh, process and, and uh, yeah, and things on, on their process. Uh, so these, those projects uh, took place uh, during the SVOM project. So the SVM project in the CNES context is, um, uh, is, a, is a project that consists in uh, studying uh, the, the GRB, which are the gamma ray bursts. It's kind of uh, gamma photon eruptions uh, that appears quite similar randomly in the sky. Um, it's considered currently at the brightest and the most energetic electromagnetic events uh, known uh, in the space. Uh, in universe, uh, there is two kind of um, GRB: some short ones and long ones, different durations, some seconds or some minutes. Uh, two theories uh, emerged in this context. Um, maybe it's kind of a gravitation, gravitational collapse of giant stars, just for the the short uh, the short GRBs, and uh, for the long one, it's maybe merger of binary neutron stars. So the goal of this project is to study the GRB to try to 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 check that those theories are right and yeah to to get maximum of data about uh, about the GRB. So the SVOM project concretely it's um, a system which is composed of two main parts. First one the space segment which is a satellite which will be launched uh, quite soon in uh, during the next year so really soon. Uh, it's a satellite that embeds several uh, detectors and sensors, um, and the the, the main uh, goal is to uh, using large detectors to try to 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 just get to just identify some GRB, and so reorient the, the the satellite or just the instruments in order to to point to point the GRB with some precise sensors. In order to to get a maximum of precise data, uh, and so associated to this space segment, there is a ground segment uh, composed of two uh, main agencies: the Chinese one and the French one. Uh, that will yeah will be dedicated. Those two centers will just get the information, um, drive the the satellite, and yeah and get the data and analyze everything. Uh, yeah. So in this context, uh, uh, historically, and in this case, no difference, uh, the historical process used a lot of data of documents uh, that will be uh, yeah, just refined successively. Uh, the specifications, the conceptions, uh, the design of the system will be done uh, yeah, using Word documents uh, and Excel, uh, Excel sheets, and so, uh, those documents will be refined, and so, like, yeah, everything. Every, everybody knows that it's kind of successful refinement of document. There is no structural um, links between uh, the document, just references, but no structural uh, checks. Um, so, as the idea was, yeah, we can try. It's it's maybe a good idea to try to use more models, more 
structural information and, uh, and, link, and links between uh, uh, specification. So why not using some MBSE? So three main benefits for us. There is the communication that will be uh, improved using uh, the MBSE, so by using a rigorous language. Uh, some uh, secure stuff, stuff such as like some automatic consistency, uh, just to check that everything is okay within is is covered, um, that the, the system is well defined, that is not missing some uh, uncovered uh, requirements, for example. And the last one is the automatic generation of of uh, data of structures such, such as some documents, for example, some um, specification document so that can be automatically generated instead of writing them uh, handily so quite uh, can be a good uh, benefit so the goal was to try to uh, reconciliate so to approach to find a way to to transfer this historic process based on several documents to the uh, arcadia capella of way of work uh, which is based as you know on mainly four layers, two dedicated to the needs uh, captures and two dedicated to the uh, solution specification. So the, the problem of those projects was how to uh, map uh, the documents we have, the documents that, that were uh, historically created during the process with this new way of, uh, of work. Okay. So we decided in this context and the, the, the administration staff decided to, to, to build two different projects. First one was uh, dedicated to the uh, interface engineering study just by considering this perimeter of documents, the global architecture, the, the specification of the equipment. Uh, MX, MXT and Eclair are some uh, of the equipment that are embedded in the, on, the, on board on the satellite. Uh, that was the first project, and given that the result was quite good, quite uh, quite nice, we decided to 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 launch a second project, which is dedicated to the study of the of the VNV uh, stuff, so the VNV uh, process, uh, dedicated to validation and verification of the system, and also uh, at the end of this second project, we we try we decided to to study the the requirements management and the generation of the satellite database. Uh, the case of the database, it's not a Word document; it's a CADS uh, dedicated software, which is also an Eclipse-based software. But uh, yeah, which is which is dedicated to the capture of the information um, that will be shared and and um, used by the satellite. So the first project uh, took place uh, after the, the, the design of the system. Okay, it was not after it's parallel. So uh, the idea was not to operationally uh, use this process, just to, to make a proof of concept that it's possible to, to use a, a Capella to do the same, so the same job, okay. So first of all, in order to capture the, to, 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 con to design the interfaces of the system. And uh, so we use the Capella and based on the clarity uh, methodology, we, we were able to capture the system. Uh, first of all, the, the needs using uh, the system analysis layer. Um, so we define some, uh, uh, yeah, the, the overview of the system, the exchange uh, with uh, this, its environment, and we refined it using uh, uh, the functional, uh, the function, the functional chains. Okay. Um, so after that, we refined these layers, uh, this layer using the logical architecture. Okay. We defined the solution associated to this need. So all this information were captured from the documents that were, in this case, uh, written by hand, okay? And so we were able to capture using Capella uh, the design of, of the system, okay? The, the structure, in this case, you can see the part of the satellite, okay? Uh, PDPU, Eclairs are some equipment that are embeds. And so we are able to capture 
the function the functional chains between the different uh, function and the different part of the system and also to capture the logical links between each uh, component and so we captured quite all the system using capella without any problem okay and the interfaces between each component and uh, the, uh, the environment and so yeah we we use all was all which is provided by by capella we were able to capture the, the whole interfaces okay without any problem concerning the logical layer no, no problem about it and so uh, using those captured information you we were able to generate um, quite automatically uh, some um, uh, some yeah some view on, uh, on the interface uh, between uh, between components in order to build some uh, dedicated uh, specification okay so in this case those two documents were those two diagrams sorry were quite automatically generated using the capture information so that's quite the goal of it it's to to be able to to specify the interfaces and to have a, a precise documentation so on this goal is the goal of building the, the associated documentation because the goal is to to map on the existing uh, process we don't want to 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 change everything in one step just saying them uh, stop to to write the documents and uh, we'll do only models and you will them you will use them no the goal is to maybe try to to reconnect um to the historical process so we made uh, also uh, this proof of concept and uh, using the uh, the capella models okay uh, in order to generate the associated, the historical word documents, the specification of the equipment and so on, we use the M2Doc uh, tool. Uh, okay, that's allow you by specific, specifying some um, some templates uh, using quite kind of codes. Okay, of Axeleo codes, of uh, AQL code, and uh, you are able so to generate. Uh, some documents that use uh, the data that are captured and also the diagram that were uh, uh, realized, represented, okay? And so compared, uh, we compared this uh, results, this document with the original one, which was uh, manually created, okay? And so we obtained quite the same results. Um, with a nicer representation, maybe, um, but yeah, so the proof of concept yeah was was done it's it works so we were quite yeah quite happy it it, it works uh the interface engineering in such context is quite really uh, crucial because uh it's an international context uh, the modification can be really costly when you modify an interface later it's yeah it can be really hard to propagate it um and so uh, Capella in this case is quite ready and the three objectives are quite okay we have a formal specification uh, we have an automatic evaluation of the coverage of the need and we are sure that the specification is, is okay and we also are able to generate documentation so uh, at the end of this project uh, with the CNES we, we decided to, to to launch a second project and in this case we decided to try to use uh, cap to use the models we realized during the first project to operationally capture the vnv data and so to design the vnv process in this case so to really use it to validate the, uh, the currently in under development uh, system so to do it we we used what is included in capella uh, so first of all, uh, we used, for example, the, the different representation layers by capturing the, the capability, for example, uh, in order to be sure that uh, to evaluate the coverage okay, of the system, to, to be sure that every capability is well covered. So it's kind of a validation. Okay. Uh, the second one, we, we use the functional chains uh, capabilities in order to 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 kind to capture the the validation goals, okay. Uh, so to try to identify which um, 
paths uh, will have to be uh, validated. Um, so no problem about it. We use kind of classical Capella features. We also use some scenario. Okay, we we shown uh, at, uh, to cap to the CNES that it's possible to yeah to capture some scenarios in order to specify some test sequences. Okay, and we decided to go a little bit further in order to, to really operationally um, do the job. Okay, do the uh, answer the, the problems. Uh, so based on the uh, on the functional chain, so you have one, just just this one, for example. Uh, we decided to inject some some uh, features that is dedicated to the to the specification of the concretization of the of the chain, because in this case uh, the chains that you can you can see on the top, okay, just there, uh, is not you can you cannot execute such kind of of chain because uh the, the the purple parts are coming from the space it's uh, just sending a message from the space to the earth and then analyze uh, the the message you received so this functional chain is not you cannot validate it as it uh, so we inject the capability to uh specify the concretization of the of the chain okay as you can see here, we specify that in order to simulate kind of simulation of this uh, part of the of the chain, you can use the red one, okay, the red one which is uh, just above, okay, and so you can simulate, you can validate this chain using this alternative chain, and then using this, this data, we are able automatically to generate a, a default by default scenario only one but you can have several different scenarios for a single functional chain so by default we we generate one and the user can uh, customize it just to decide to make some several cycle or and so on and in this context you can using this extension okay a new this new capella extension you are able to inject some uh, to specify some 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 kind of checkpoint, okay? Some uh, the blue box are some interaction with the system uh, in order to execute concretely the, the, the test. Is you have to to execute the blue parts manually, for example, um, and the those uh, yellow parts are the check you have to to execute just to check that that the test is is okay, okay. Uh, so yeah, the blue parts are the interaction with the system and the yellow parts are the validation that the system well works. And so using this extension, we uh, we use based on the model, we propagate propagated the, the, this principle, okay, on this uh, diagram, for example, we captured several functional chains, so several uh, validation goals, and then, Based on this capture, we were able to generate several scenarios, okay, in order to validate that the system well answered the, uh, yeah, well answered. So, uh, considering this goal, um, once again, um, uh, Capella did the job with maybe some extension in order to go further in the uh, objectives and test sequences capture, okay. Uh, considering the main uh, goals, uh, so that's perfect considering concerning the communication because the model was concretely and operationally used in order to identify tests. Uh, so that's quite, uh, that, that's a real operational use of the model, so it's perfect. Uh, so the evaluation of the, of the coverage uh, uh, by the test is Quite automatic and yeah, we really uh, able to, to to secure the the, mod, the the specification, and then we were able also in this case to generate some specification documents, and we did it in order to reconnect to the historical process and yeah. So that was for the validation and verification, uh, and then we decided to to make some. A partial study of uh, the requirement management in the in this context. So, uh, 
concerning the, the goals, it can be to organize requirements, uh, to make some traceability in order to be sure that the coverage is okay, and uh, then to uh, to generate documents that include requirements and model items. In this about this goal, it was just study, just to to see what is what is it, okay, how it works in this uh, project. So uh, we analyzed uh, quite 600 textual requirements um, they, they have. Uh, and so we can see that uh, quite 60% six, uh, uh, were not totally not covered by the model, not linkable to the model, OK? And uh, the others are quite, uh, can be replaced, totally replaced by the model, or sometimes just partially linked to the model and, and partially replaced. So why is 60%? As this partial coverage is maybe is due um, to the um, yeah to the quite uh, various uh, level of requirements uh, we have in this context. So we have uh, uh, in this context some requirement, for example, as the verification phase should not exceed five months. They are not quite functional uh, requirements. So completely not uh, not linkable to, to the model. So in this context, we still need uh, uh, a autonomous requirement process, but by structuring it, maybe we were able to, to improve this coverage and to be sure that, yeah, to use the model as a requirement uh, uh, tool. So uh, I see that the, the time is running, so maybe go faster. Uh, so we also study the um, kind of coverage we have uh, and is there uh, incoming or outgoing requirements uh, we, we, we found in the in this in the list. So we saw that uh, it's maybe it's mainly incoming requirements so it's good because the requirements will really drive the model creation. And, but we saw that this requirement list was mainly due, dedicated to the behavior. So maybe there will need some more uh, structural requirements, requirements that describe the structure uh, needed, okay? Uh, in order to be, to be sure to, to build the system as it has to be, okay? But we can see that using the requirements, we were able to, uh, to quite partially build the system and uh, maybe avoid uh, uh, some uh, some engineering steps just by using the requirements to to build the, the system. Okay. So um, another goal was to try to generate uh, the satellite database. So uh, it's defined in this case using a specific dedicated tool, uh, and so. The idea was to try to generate it, to initialize it in the first step. Uh, and so we made a proof of concept by defining some mapping rules between the Capella model and the CAD models. Um, and so we developed some uh, Capella extension, just a small export tool, which was able to generate uh, the structure of the CADS model. So we were not able to capture everything because some data are not on the right specification level, okay? Uh, but yeah, we are able to make an initialization. So it's quite quite good for us. So, so uh, the last one is the CNES feedback. Okay, the last slide. Um, and so that uh, what I will present you is really uh, the words of the CNES, not mine, it's really the, uh, what they expressed at the end of the project. So green part is good. Uh, the, they, find, they found that the Capella uh, and Capella models were really uh, useful uh, in their context. Um, and it's really good because it's imposed rigor, it structures the work. Uh, they can obtain some uh, a communication platform that can be uh, really useful. Um, uh, the red part is maybe less good. Uh, they they considered that uh, it's quite for for them it's quite difficult to 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 make some modeling using Capella because 
it's still uh, it's difficult to identify the right specification level okay for them uh, um, and uh, the doc generation using m2 doc was not for them quite usable um, because it's too difficult to to specify the templates the language is quite some some yeah too hard for them uh, but uh, they are engineers and no, not, um, yeah, you know, they didn't make code themselves. So, yeah, it was quite hard for them. But, um, yeah, and considering the requirements, yeah, the results is quite good, but maybe a little bit, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's, but the, the structure of the requirements is quite heterogeneous. So, yeah, we were not able to, to do more than, than it. Um, and so, for them, uh, they really think that it will be possible to really use MBSC in their future projects, but they think that they really need to be uh, strongly trained before the beginning of the project. And uh, for them, they will still need some couple experts in their teams. Uh, but in this context, they didn't add really a lot of time to to to, to learn how to use Capella. So just maybe by you, yeah make some training session before the beginning of the project, it will be enough just to to, to use Capella by themselves. I think so. So, uh, so thank you very much. Um, so if you like the CNES, if like the CNES, you need some assistance in inserting a pinch of MBSE in your process, feel free to contact us. And uh, yeah, and if you have any question, I'm here for that. So thank you very much. And, you're welcome. Jeanette. Thanks for this presentation and for, for your insights. Uh, it was quite interesting. We actually have three questions, but I'm sure that the attendee will add more of that. Uh, OK, first question. Is the extension you developed available under an open source license? I, uh, currently not. Uh, currently, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's our products that we sell. Uh, you can see uh, some information on, uh, on, on our website. Um, so don't hesitate to contact us. And after, if you have specific need, we can make some um, some study uh, with you. Uh, but yeah, now currently it's uh, yeah, it's not uh, it's a commercial uh, extension. Okay, thanks. Uh, did you uncover inconsistency? on the document-based system description when you transferred it to a model? And what was the reaction from Ness? Inconsistency, not. We didn't uh, notice any inconsistency, but we, we identified that sometimes the documents were not, uh, were kind of heterogeneous because they mixed some uh, different um, specification information okay you have some time some part of the need some type of, some part of the results and it's sometimes some mix as uh, that are not quite uh seems not to be good so uh, uh with them we worked uh, in order to define a new uh when we made the m2 doc we we defined templates that were more homogeneous and so it seems to be yeah Maybe more stable for the process and was well received by 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 the CNES. There were no no, no problem about it, and uh, we worked to, together, so it was really yeah. The result is quite good, and we have now more structural documents documents that are more yeah homogeneous. You know, it's quite hard to explain, but yeah, that's it. No, I think we we got the point. Okay, perfect. Okay, thanks. Next question, regarding requirements, uh, it's clear in Capella how to represent requirements from the operational phase of a system, but how to represent requirements that come from other life cycle phases, such as manufacturing or testing? Uh, yeah, so uh, Capella yeah, has no problem about it. It is able to capture um, uh, requirements that can be covered by other kind of uh, elements. So, for example, you will be able to to capture some uh, testing requirements and link it to um, 
to a, a test sequence, for example. So the problem is, yeah, maybe about injecting uh, some requirements later and because, yeah, Capella is maybe not the perfect tool dedicated to the capture of the requirements. So if you use some doors or you can make some bridge, there is, it exists some bridge, bridges, but yeah, you will maybe have to to iteratively import the new requirements that will come later. So will be maybe a kind of, uh, yeah, uh, gymnastic, I don't know, a, a kind of uh, <laughs> a, a job to, yeah, to, to remerge the requirements and uh, to not forget to ring the new one. But yeah, I think it will not be a strong problem to capture them using, uh, uh, yeah, for the testing, for the manufacturing one. Oh, uh, maybe it's not the right place to capture it, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure to uh, to have the answer about it. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. In any yeah, case, yeah, it's, we, we have share. to do it and to try to yeah, <laughs> and to inject okay, it to the so right thanks. Order. So next question, and I like this one. Why did you select Capella for your MBSC experiment? Oh yeah, nice question. Um, but yeah, because uh, we are more yeah. We are kind of uh, Capella lovers, uh, and uh, yeah, for us it's quite the the best currently, uh, the best uh, modeler and and yeah and uh, methodology and uh, um, for such kind of uh, of pro of projects, okay, of goals, um, but uh, concretely, yeah. Um, I will have to compare it to, to all other possibilities, such as using CCML, using UML. Um, but in this case, it's because, yeah, for us, we, we studied a lot of Capella. We made some extension because we think that it's quite a good, uh, a good solution to, yeah, to conceive and to design systems. And yeah, uh, but maybe you, you would have a more concrete answer, but uh, yeah. Well, I have more concrete arguments, but it's just my role to, to tell about that just right now. But if I may, um, uh, is the decision made by the CNES or by Artal to use Capella in this project? Ah, okay. Um, on this point, yeah, we, we propose to the CNES to, to use Capella. We present them some um, yeah arguments about using Capella because for us it was quite a good... Uh, the good solution, and they, uh, yeah, they, they find our proposition quite nice. Uh, I, I can say that it's it begins uh, three years ago. I really don't remember how it, yeah, how it was the scheduling, but uh, we, yeah, we make some, we made some proposal, and uh, we have some concurrency about it, and yeah, as I found that the Capella approach was a good one and um, and they, they received several propositions using Capella and um, yeah so yeah they they decided to to to, to choose this uh, our proposition so this kind of yeah decided by the CNES and regarding the, the other proposition I don't I didn't know I didn't remember is if they received some CCML or your proposition or Something else, something else, but yeah, they decided. Okay, thanks. Um, in your opinion, uh, yeah, is the MBSC model can be co become the primary source of truth, and what is required to make such a transition? Um, other base requirements. Uh, I don't know if we speak about requirements or everything. I, I, in my opinion, I think that one day maybe we can uh, we can imagine to have uh, only models without any uh, specification documents, uh, word documents, or and uh, you speak about paper-based requirements. Uh, I think that the, the paper-based uh, maybe textual requirements is better than paper-based because. Um, yeah, for me, 
the goal will be one day to just avoid to write uh, a lot of uh, textual requirements. There is some problem with them when it's possible to replace them by some uh, structural uh, representation, okay? Like a system analysis layer in Capella. Um, and so for me, it's better because when you write some sentences, uh, when you want to add some information, you maybe will have write another sentence sentence and just in Capella, you will just have to, to add a new link or a new function and it will be okay. So for me, one day it will be possible to just work using model. Everything will use model uh, on each levels, but it will take a lot of time uh, for it because there is, yeah, um, uh, you know, a uh, lot of historic process and uh, yeah. So, but yeah, I think that one day it will be um, totally be the primary source of truth uh, and uh, what it, uh, what it need, what is needed? I think um, time and uh, some uh, new uh, new engineers maybe because as uh, the currently in universities and so on, there is more and more learns about uh, MBSC and and tools. So maybe the new generation will step by step will inject more and more MBSC, and uh, one day maybe just. To, to create uh, uh, word documents, but yeah, we have to see, we have to wait and see, and uh, but yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Okay, thanks. And probably the last question: um, What is the estimated impact of MBSC and no. Capella on the SVOMO schedule? Um, in this case uh, the engineer the interface engineering was not uh, operationally um, done on this project okay it, it was done uh, by the, using the historical process so there were there was no impact on the schedule and concerning the validation phase which was operationally uh, did uh, we did operationally using capella uh, is yeah still uh, on schedule and there is no there was no uh, uh no impacts uh no bad impacts but no good impacts no either, either because uh there was some communication uh phase uh to 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 show them how to use the model so we we just inject some capella meetings and capella work session with them uh but yeah we tried to to not uh uh, change the schedule so sometimes uh, to say everything I can say that you that that sometimes uh, they wrote some uh, test sequences uh, by the historical uh, manner okay uh, and uh, then we transferred it on the capella model because uh, yeah they, they needed to to do it. Uh, Right now, and uh, there was no, no time to 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 plan uh, any uh, any meeting. So, yeah, uh, in this context, they didn't really used uh, Capella by themselves uh, because they didn't at time. So we we modified and uh, we captured some information only uh, during meetings. So sometimes, yeah, they did the, the job uh, uh, by the historical way, and uh, but yeah, they the the model was. Uh, was really used to to conceive the the test sequences and uh, and to generate the documentation, but we did the job in parallel uh, when they, they conceived uh, some uh, sequence with us. Then after we made the generation and we they, we sent us uh, the document. So no no impact in this uh, and the easiest form in on schedule. Yeah, uh, regarding those parts, uh, yeah, no problem about it. Yeah. Okay, many thanks, right, and for all those insights. This is very interesting presentation. Um, it will be time for me to to close this day. Let me just a few seconds to set up uh, the environment. I will close Jonathan Windows too. Okay, so. Uh, 
it was really nice to to have this uh, this afternoon with you. I will. I would like to to thank uh, our speakers today. Uh, it was very kind for them to to share their insight, and I'm sure the content they have delivered will be extremely valuable for for the community. So thanks, Guy, for your time and, and for sharing with us. Uh, I also would like to thanks again as the organizing team, all your sponsors, and without them, this event could not possibly occur. So uh, once again, thanks for your implication and your, and your support. I really hope you enjoyed this first day. I also hope that many of you will come back tomorrow, and uh, maybe even more. You can invite uh, colleagues, family or friends. Actually, the fees will be the same. <laughs> we will have a rather interesting program tomorrow uh, with two feedbacks from high tech equipment industry and waste collecting. And it also be an opportunity to have an overview of the latest capital development and, and roadmap. And um, it's fairly easy to do so. You just have to reconnect using the same address as today. In the meantime, if you have any question uh, on the event or on Capella in general, feel free to reach me. You can also contact the speaker, of course, and I'm sure they will be glad to assist you. And as a reminder, uh, you can also enter your question for the Thursday live Q&A session. Once again, it was a pleasure to be with you today. Uh, thanks for watching and see you tomorrow.